Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Good morning. Uh, before we start, please um, uh, mute your cell phones so they don't start ringing as we go through the procedures. And for, uh, for those who can stand, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have some new people here today. Uh, John and Margaret O'Leary, would you please stand if you can? They are new residents. I see Jim Wilson. Jim, will you please stand up? They are also a new resident. And we have a couple more. Clint and Diane Witten, please stand. And although she's been here for a while, this is the first uh, resident council meeting she has attended. Karen Meddings. <laughs> Raise your hand, Karen. <laughs> also, before we start, we have a we have a boy a boy tape boy here this morning, and it's Alan Winterbottom. <laughs> You can sing if you want. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alan. Happy birthday to you. Okay, we'll call a meeting to order this morning. And uh, the first thing we'll have is a roll call. Bob, will you handle that, please? Yes, well. Can you hear me okay? Yep, yep. All right, President George Kevin. I'm here. Vice President Don Hoffmeister. Treasurer Wayne Schweifler. Bob Winry. <laughs> and members of the large are Beverly Adair, Nancy Dick, Margo Schweitzer, and last but not least, our birthday boy, Alan Winry. All present. Would you handle the approval of yes, those minutes? Yes, and I'll ask the council for a motion to approve last month's. I so approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's go on to the uh, treasurer's report. Wayne, would you give us that, please? I have a new toy. <laughs> <laughs> Treasurer's report covers the month of May. We had a beginning balance of $22,302. We had expenses of $67.81. Income in the form of donations, $1,830, leaving us a final balance of $24,064.44. Uh, we had most of the money came in in the scholarship fund in the amount of $1,010, mainly from donations and a small amount from the Cozy Corn Thrift Shop. There were no disbursements. Holiday Gift Fund received $225 from the Cozy Corner Thrift Shop and no disbursements. The Library Fund had income of $560 from donations and expenses of $67.81. Happy Flower Fund had income of $35 and no expenses. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, we'll go through the uh, various reports of the standing committees. And uh, Margo, will you please come up and talk to us about the special events? You can adjust this a little bit. Um, can, you can hear me well? Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, 
the main known activity uh, there will there will be today a fisherman landing restaurant event if uh, those of you it, it's at the Marriott those of you who have signed up you will be meeting in the main lobby uh, it's at 4 p.m. Any questions? No. Somebody said to me yesterday it's, it's at 3.30. 3.30? The, the driver of one of them said to me to be downstairs at 3.30, but I didn't hear nor here nor there, so I don't know. Okay, so they are on the safe side, be in the main lobby around 3.30. I'm okay. going to check with them. Okay. Um, the castaway performance uh, will be Saturday at 3 p.m. in the auditorium right here. Um, there will be a birthday, a general birthday party on June 25th, Sunday at, two, at 3 p.m. Again, right here. So if you want to cheer up for all those there are a lot of June birthdays, so come up and enjoy the cake. Um, there will be a travel event with the Kepners on the 26th. We will be going to Europe again, Amsterdam, Germany, all the main city, Berlin, Dresden, and all the Rhine Valley castles. Uh, the live flute training by Vanessa will be Saturday. I guess it's a standing classes uh, from 10 to 11 a.m. Uh, upstairs in the Belva Dickinson's lounge. Um, bring your iPhone and your iPads with you uh, to understand and practice. Uh, the July activity so far, we have one main event, this is the 4th of July. Uh, we will have a big brunch, but remember, you do need reservation. It's very important for the chef to know how much food to prepare. So keep that in mind. You make all your reservation at the front desk in the main lobby, okay? That's it. Thank you. Any question? Uh, is there any chance in getting Bob Allen here again? As far as we know, uh, she's working on him, but we don't have the... The question was, is there chances of getting Bob Allen back to perform once again? And I believe he's been contacted, but the date hasn't been finalized. For those, who have, for those of you who attended Bob Allen's performance, uh, he did a sensational job. He turned this auditorium into a lounge. And very, very entertaining. So we hope to have him back. Yeah, Vanessa was aware of that. We put in a request. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Angela, would you please talk to us about the Building and Grounds Committee? I will. Thank you. You can adjust that up and down. Good morning. The um, HVAC filters have been replaced. I, I know they started in the 500 area and I think they're completed. If not, they're on the way. Spectrum has been updating some software where needed. So not every unit will need that, but in some places it's been updated. The weed killer is being deposited in the grass areas. There's been many questions about that. The CC pool hoist for entering the pool is on order. And there was a question about the trash bags, particularly in the Casita areas where we use blue for recycling and white or some other color. And when the fella comes around with this big barrel, he throws them all in the same one. So there was a question, why are we bothering to separate? When he gets to the main area with the big um, barrels, he then separates them. 
So please put your recyclables in the blue bag only. The benches and cushions in the courtyard have been cleaned uh, and the tables will be cleaned also and that will be added to the regular schedule. This month, a major concern that's been brought up is the proper disposal of wet waste, pet waste, pet waste. All waste must be picked up and put in green plastic bags. And those bags must then be deposited either in the collection receptacles, some are in, one is in the dog park, and there are two on the exterior of the um, uh, apartment areas, and another one will be added. Or you can take them to one of the main um, dumpsters. No pet waste of any kind should be deposited in the apartment waste collection rooms, the Gasita trash bags, or any other trash receptacles on the grounds. There have been some incidences where that has not happened, and um, we need to really step on, on following those orders. Any questions? The yes. dog has to be picked up. That's all. The status of finishing the uh, uh, ravine in the middle of the 600s, it looks nice what they've done, but there's one major section that's still un undone. Right. Um, at, uh, Nestor said that those extra uh, rocks and so forth are still on order and will be put in. And I did forget to say that. Um, the uh, window washing is scheduled for June 22nd to 29th. That's been a major issue. Skip, skip right over there. They're out there. They're out there. They're out there. Oh, they're there now? Start early. Okay, early. Good. Okay. Yes. Where do we get the green bags? The, the far, as far as I know, they're attached to the disposers. Um, I don't know if you can pick them up in another area or not. Does anybody? I, I have disposal bags that I already own. There are two places. There's one around the corner outside with a put place to put in, but first pick up. Cause, and number two, there's at the dog park one that's covered. Okay, so, so far it looks wherever there are the disposers which are on the... Uh, There's two that I saw. Rods, yeah. There's only the, two that I saw. Right, and if there's a need for another area someplace, you might let us know and maybe they can look into making them readily available. Right. Yeah. Right. Could, could you send a message to all the dog owners as when you go out to pot, there's Sometimes they haven't come out and done it. Molly okay, will be uh, will be doing handling that portion. That's Good. really not a function of the council. Oh, yes. However, uh, Molly, Molly will be taking care. We of all that. live here, and we should pick up the poop. I agree Simple. with you. I agree with you fully. However, we cannot demand that. We are not in that kind of a position. But if you see somebody not, it's just put them to shame and say, "Hey." <laughs> Pick it up. Yes, ma'am. I do that. Any other questions or comments? Not funny. It's terrible. Question. That uh, disposal area where the big trash cans are kept, there's no maintenance in there. I mean, sticky goo all over the ground as you're walking and tracking away. It's, uh, it's, I don't ever see any cleaning done in that area. On the floor, of, yeah. yeah. After the trucks, I'm sure when they pick them up, they just pick them up and move out. So that's good. We'll make note of that. Thank you. What and was the, the comment? The um, floor of the two areas where the major trash receptacles are. The dumpsters. Dumpsters. Yes. The trucks come in, they pick them up, and they unload them, but they don't get out of the truck and sweep the floor. <laughs> so we can look on that. Okay. Anything else? Thank you.
Thank you, Angela. Alan, please talk to us about the uh, uh, food committee. Well, a pleasant good morning to you all, and thanks for that special greeting that I did not have to get. It was very nice. Okay, things are moving along very well with the Food Service Committee. Both of our chefs are functioning well. I'm sure that you've noticed some new faces in the servicing area, and indeed the, uh, the breakfast last Sunday went particularly well, so we were, I think, on a good track. Uh, we do have cards that are available to anybody having dining experience with us to be filled out if you'd like to make any comments, either plus or minus, because as a committee we do review them all, and that's one good source of information for us. Any questions? All right, thank you. Bevedere, would you uh, talk to us about wellness and the scholarship committee? Please. All right, well, I'd rather hold the microphone. <laughs> That's okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. All right. Wellness. Or as we're now learning to say, the Committee on Health Services. When we all moved into the Carlotta, we completed a multi-page, medically oriented document known as the 602. It provided information that told that we were capable of moving into a place like the Carlotta. The state of California mandates that this be updated every year. And I'm sure you're now thinking, you don't remember that happening. <laughs> Watermark was not very um, demanding about the fact that we always yearly updated this document. But Oakmont Ivy Living knows that it's just really important. And so each of us, unless we've been here less than a year, need to update our 602. It asks things like um, mental health. A lot of the stuff we can fill out on our own. Um, our mental health, physical health, um, medications, things that, that we would be able to answer easily. Some of the other things on it, a doctor would need to answer. But it needs to be reviewed and signed by a doctor. Oh, so... <laughs> Rebecca, who is the resident care coordinator in health services department, is handling this overall project. She wants to hear from each of us as to whether we would like to take this document to our own primary care physician or whether we would like the senior docs to be the doctor of the signature. The forms are um, probably 10 or 11 pages long. You have your choice, but one way or the other, every one of us needs to call or email Rebecca as to whether we want to take this document to our own doctor for a signature or whether we want to have the senior doc's doctor here sign the, uh, sign the document. What's the difference, by the way? The, um, Rebecca has been more than helpful 
because she knows it's so hard for us to call her on the telephone with the way the telephone system is right now, where we can't do the message. So she has given me um, copies, which I will stand at the back um, at the end of this meeting and give you each a cell phone number for Rebecca and an email address for Rebecca. So let me go through this last part once again. If you prefer to have your own doctor sign the 602 form, call Rebecca. She will leave a form in your mailbox. You will have your doctor sign the form, return it to the front desk at the Carlotta. If you prefer to have the senior docs sign the form, call her and let her know that. Then she will provide the form for you and she will put you on the list to confer with the representatives from senior docs. Question. And it may very well be the um, nurse practitioner, Natalie, who will actually sign the form. Question. Just a second. So you need to call Rebecca or email Rebecca one way or the other. If you don't, she will call you. <laughs> but she is on her own list. She is starting with the people who have been here the longest without having updated this form. But it's going to take a while to get through all of us. Uh, yes, Angela. Go to your own doctor, there's a cost probably for the visit. Is there a cost to use the senior doctor here? You know, the, the Angela's question is, is there a cost to use a senior docs here? Um, this is a kind of thing that since you all have to talk to Rebecca anyway, that is, a, I don't know the answer, but that is something you can ask Willis. My guess is that whatever cost would be, would be go to your insurance company so that there would be no real cost to the individual. You know, the senior doctors yeah. will put the, take the cost on your Medicare. Right, and most of that would be true, but most likely go to Medicare. It is Medicare, okay? So if you have senior docs do it, uh, it's covered. You're shaking your head. When my doctor filled out mine, when we moved in six years ago, she charged me $25. Says, could not charge it to the insurance company or Medicare. <laughs> well, since you all need to call or email Rebecca, <laughs> you are going to have this answer one way or the other. Yes. Beverly, are you aware if we have senior docs do it, would we have to fill out their lengthy forms? They, you do not have to, it's my understanding that we do not need to fill out the senior docs application and that they will still sign it. Molly, is that true? Do you know? Since I don't, since I'm not charging senior docs, I'm not gonna speak for them. My thought is that if you're just having senior docs fill out your 602 because you can't get into your physician or whatever, is that they don't need as lengthy as a, as a patient application form. I think what Mrs. Amini is referring to is the patient application form, like you are signing up for them to be your primary care physician, but since we are not in charge of senior docs business. I'm not going to speak for them. Rebecca may, there may be a more of an abbreviated form if you're just having them do your 602. What Mrs. Kemper was referring to with the $25 charge, I know I've experienced this. A lot of doctor's offices charge you to fill out paperwork because 
they can because you need the paperwork filled out. So that is an additional charge. Different doctor's offices have different prices on that. And you're right, Mrs. Kepner, that's not something that they, it's kind of like an upcharge. That's not something that insurance is going to cover. But I cannot stress strongly enough that Natalie, uh, that Rebecca is waiting to hear from each of you. And I say, Rebecca, if you give us all your cell phone number, you're going to be inundated with calls. She said, not a problem. They can leave a message. I will call them back. If I want to be sure to talk directly to every resident. So one way or the other, no matter what your questions are, you're going to have to talk to Rebecca. When is she a um, employee of Oakmont, or is she? In she is an LVN here at the oh, Carlotta. No, 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 no. Rebecca no? is not an LVN. She. I beg your pardon. Thank you, Molly. <laughs> Sorry, but no, Rebecca is the resident care coordinator. So that's why she's doing a big chart audit. That's why she's starting with the folks who have been here the longest to get all the updated information. She works with Helen. She's worked in the community for quite some time, but no, she is not an LVN. Isn't she a CRN? She's a care provider. Is she going to be here all the time or is this just- She works here. She is a full-time employee of the community. She works Tuesdays to Saturdays from 8.30 to 5. Just a clarification too, that whether you sign up for senior doctors on that form, the one that has to be filled out either by them or your, your doctor is the same. Yes. Yes. And um, clarification on the year. Uh, you yeah, I'm not. <laughs> that is something Rebecca will have to answer. And what I'm saying, what You're close to having been here a year. <laughs> no, no, whether it's the calendar year which would be from January, or like, I got here in December, is that last year? It's based, the year is a year from when you moved in. So it's not a calendar year. Everybody needs an updated 602 annually. So it's everybody in this room is going to have a different annual update date. So I don't have to do anything. No, that's why we're starting with folks who have, well, you will soon, but and that's why we're starting with folks who have been here the longest and updating from the bottom up, if you will. If you happen to have a doctor's appointment scheduled this month and want the paperwork to kind of kill two birds with one stone, you can do it because my thought it, well, not my thought, I know we're out of compliance with a lot of folks, so getting it done a little bit early is not going to hurt anything. And since you have the appointment, you might as well take advantage of it. Molly, I'm wondering uh, what FYI next week. I will, yeah. In FYI, I put a little bit of information in the weekly letter that we're starting this process because obviously with 200 plus residents, it's more than a week long project to get everything updated. I also know you're at the mercy of your doctor giving you your information back so it's not going to be fixed or resolved in five days. So we'll go in, in depth a little bit more in FYI. We'll have the packets of information ready. So if you do want to use your utilize your own doctor, which I want to stress again, you do not have to use senior docs for anything. It is a service that we have available to our residents, but you do not have to use them. You can use your own primary care physician or senior docs. That choice is completely up to you. And we don't care which avenue you go as long as we get the updated information. And you can also use your primary physician and use the senior doc as a second. Right. That, yeah, you can do a variety of things. I just mean with the 602 forms, you do not have to use the senior doc service for that. You can utilize whatever physician that you're most comfortable with. And it would maybe Rebecca could come to FYI, yeah. but I don't know, but at least more information could be yeah. given people that day. Absolutely. Okay. 
Thank you very much. I have one, excuse me, a, an auxiliary question, and I'm sorry to bother you, but I don't know who else to ask, but part of the same process was some of us, all of us will have to have some uh, TB tests, and those of us who have tested positive before need a chest x-ray, and they came around and take, take the chest x-ray, and I don't know where I can get the result. From Rebecca, probably. So Rebecca can provide you a copy with the results. The, with the TB test, I never heard of this. You you did because I. If you, oh sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so the six oh two forms have to be filled out annually. The TB test, we just have to have one TB test or check the chest X-ray. If you always get a positive response on your TB test on file. You do not have to get a TB test annually, unless for some reason you come and tell me that you had TB exposure and then we'll be off to the races with TB tests. So a couple weeks back, we did a clinic for TB tests for folks that needed to have at least one on record. So the TB test, you do not have to do that annually when your doctor or senior docs or whoever you have fill out the 602 form. I'd like to move on to scholarship. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> and for, since there are several of you that are new here this morning, the residents each year have the opportunity to contribute to the scholarship fund, which is given to our associates, our workers here at the Carlotta, non-management employees who are both working at the Carlotta and who are going to school at the same time. They really do double duty. So the scholarship fund has been going at the Carlotta since about 2004. We're at the moment, we're kind of at the end of our money raising part of the fund. We have raised since March $10,615. Keep in mind, however, that we accept donations all year long. And it's often done where if you would like to honor a friend or a family member or give a donation in memory of a friend or family member to the scholarship fund, then we will alert that family or individual that that has happened. At the moment, we have five associates who are applying for scholarships. The deadline is June 30th, and the month of July, the committee will be meeting with those five applicants. And then we hope to keep the same calendar schedule as we did last year, and introduce you to those people at the August Resident Council meeting, at which time we will give them their scholarship awards. That way you can participate in that as well. Any questions on scholarship? Angela? Is there money left over in the fund from last year that wasn't awarded? There, there is money left over How much is that? from last year and um, about four thousand, Wayne said. Yes, and we'd like to leave some at the end of every year for the next year. Uh, Just to make yes. that clear, it's well, not used for anything else. It's this this fund only goes for scholarships, and some years we are able to raise more money than we do others, and it's like nice to have a little cushion. March. What would be the deadline this year for donating? There is no deadline for donating. At what point do you cut it off in order to calculate? March's question is, at what point do we cut off for us to calculate? 
uh, July 1 would be what we would use. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. I'm just curious if that cushion that you have, the $4,000 remains, is it used during the year at all? Is it what? Is it used. used for anybody else during the year? The scholarship fund is only always used just for scholarships. And it will sit in the fund until the following year when we would get more. So it just sits there. In the past, traditionally, I think the committee has been somewhat conservative and they never know for sure what the next year is going to bring. And it's just nice to always be able to give donations. And if there's a little cushion, then it makes us feel better. <laughs> but I understand you're worried about the money sitting in the fund. Okay, George, finally I'm finished. Okay, we're into quite a period of time now since Oakmont has taken over, and I'm sure that you've noticed some of the changes as I have. Uh, it can be we can talk about what we like and what we don't like, but the fact of the matter is, it has changed. And I think overall the change has been a positive change. You might not own or it's not working. Certainly the, the uh, things that we have seen, if you've eaten in the dining room lately, uh, you can attest that I think the food has gotten better. So it's a case where it's on the right track, and hopefully it will continue to be on the right track. But if you see things, if you want things to maybe change, you need to be a voice. You need to let that be known. So having said all that, are there any questions or things that you would like to talk about here today? Um, well, I, yeah, I'd like to know who um, I would have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with about Oakmont Signature Care. Okay, the question is who Wilson has asked who he should have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation with on Signature Care. Uh, I think uh, that has to go with Molly, because Molly is the, the Executive Director, and if she can't get you an answer that makes sense to you, she knows what she has to do as far as going to someone else above her. Okay, thank you. Okay. Another question. Yeah? This is with reference to the elevator, which is not working. No. The soft elevator isn't working. Well, the one by the Dickinson Lounge. Okay. And uh, I'm right there, so I'm using the stairs up and down, okay. um, which I can do with difficulty. But this morning, coming down, I came down, and the door into the hallway was locked. So I had to use the outside ex exit and go outside to come back in. Okay. And it would be very nice if that door was unlocked as it was yesterday. Okay, the question uh, that uh, Sui is bringing up is that the south elevator is not working right now. And she had a problem that once she went outside to come uh, down, uh, the door was locked. Uh, I will make a note of that, and I will talk to the front desk as soon as we finish. On your other key. Anything else I want to talk about? Comment. If the, an elevator is not working, shouldn't there be a notice, maybe through Life Loop, to let us know in advance? I agree with you, yes. There should be some kind of notice. I noticed that there's a, a sheet hanging on the elevator door down here. But I don't know what there's it says one, upstairs. There's one upstairs. And there's one upstairs, this is what he says. But yes, I think uh, we should be told a little bit what the problem is, how long it's going to be inoperative, and things like that. Yes, Angela, I agree. What else? Yes. Well, 
what's going to happen to that ugly furniture? <laughs> what is the question is what is going to happen to that ugly quote furniture in the lobby? I don't know. Uh, I saw some people doing putting uh, different. Uh, I don't know what they're called, but they were trying to make the stay they go a little larger up. So by putting new uh, uh, bottles on, I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, I, I, I can't really answer that question. I don't know. Unfortunately, it's above my pay grade. That's, that's really a great question to ask next Wednesday at the FYR meeting. Because that should have people who can answer that question. We can't. Yes? The question is, when we leave the facility of, uh, overnight, we are supposed to let the uh, them know here, and uh, they have been uh, they have been told we're leaving. However, uh, they're still seemingly not communicating that to the wellness group and wellness calls. They're not because I got twice a phone call in New York. I believe you. I, I, I believe you. So, again, great questions for the FYI meeting, okay? Uh, we can't really do much about those, but the FYI meetings, you'll have all the people there who are supposed to be communicating with other places that so-and-so is not going to be in his or her unit. What else? Yes, Joe. Uh, George, I think people need to be uh, told the window washers may show up at 6 o'clock in the morning when you oh. sound asleep, banging your windows. Um, Again, I totally agree with that. Another great comment for the FYI. I mean, I mean you know, we cannot do anything about it. And I agree with you, Jill. They shouldn't be washing your windows at 6 o'clock in the morning. I totally agree with you. However, there's nothing we can do about it. FYI means let them hear these things. Let them hear these things. It seems like they have maybe one, one finger in the ear and not listening. In the back, there was another question. Bachi group uses the north lobby upstairs to play Bachi and push all the furniture to the side so that they can use the center for the court. What they don't do is to put the furniture back after they're through so nobody can use that north lobby upstairs until they come whoever it is to come and fix it. Nobody fixes it except for me. And I stop. I don't blame you. The question or the comment was they're using the upstairs for a bocce court and they're moving furniture so that they can proceed. But once they're finished, they're not putting all the furniture back the way it was before they started. Great comment. Uh, I think that really falls on the bocce players. Uh, they really need to do things like that. Theoretically, I, I don't know who did it, but one of the bocce players asked Nestor to, if they would, because they, those are very heavy tables. And so they were supposed, they agreed that they would come and make it all right again, so. Well, since Nestor will be here in the FYI meeting, <laughs> it would be a great question to pose to him, okay? And, you know, I, I'm the type of person that I've learned long ago in this place, get it in writing. Because they all seem to deny it afterwards. Yeah, so, get it in writing. I would like to make a plea to all new residents that move into town center. The light switch right closest to the door turns on the light in the hall. And when you hit that and you're inside, you don't know it. But those lights stay on for days sometimes. And they just need to. Okay, new residents, when you move in, the light switch on your closest to your entrance door, uh, that controls the outside light 
of your door and it can stay on indefinitely unless you turn it off. Okay? Well, then you have to tell the maintenance people that because when they come into my apartment, they turn that light off. <laughs> <laughs> Another great comment for the FYI meeting, right? But they leave the door open and I go run and turn it off. <laughs> I, you, you know, I, it, 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 it's a joke, but it, on the other hand, it's very true. There are things that we just can't do. And the FYI meeting is the only place where you can say, and all these comments are, are worthwhile to bring up to. So it may be funny, but it's, it's really not funny. Yes, Jen. Who's responsible for heating the hot tub? Who's responsible for heating the hot tub? I don't know. But I think that falls on the maintenance, which is Nestor. Okay. Uh, and uh, again, a week from tomorrow. <laughs> what else? Having no other additional questions, we thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.